We are back on this Wednesday evening, the eve of the winter forecast. Tomorrow evening, we're going to dive into the upcoming winter, and we'll talk a little bit about the winter forecast at the end of this video as well. One more little teaser before the main course on Thursday. In the meantime, today, not a bad day. We had a variable amount of clouds out there, and the clouds thinned out for a time this afternoon enough that we had kind of those nice high ice crystal cirrus clouds that produce some sky optics. Thanks to Andrea near Salem for submitting this picture of a partial 22 degree halo. And on the sides, those are sun dogs, of course, on either side of the, uh, of the 22 degree halo. These are the kind of sky optics we see more and more as we get into the cold weather season and the, the sun angle is lower in the sky. It's all about refraction of sunlight against those tiny little ice crystals that are... Uh, usually present in those high cirrus clouds. The sunlight is bent at roughly a 22 degree angle. Um, when the sun is a little higher in the sky, you can see the whole halo around the sun. When it's you know, a little closer to the horizon, sometimes that bottom part of the halo is cut off as it was when that picture was submitted this afternoon. All right, so don't forget you can send us weather pictures anytime, weather pics, P-I-C-S, at WFMJ.com. Temperatures today, as expected, we had a gradient across Ohio and Pennsylvania, 45 in Erie today, but 70 in Zanesville. Pretty big change. Um, it was all about the wind direction, of course, today. As the warm front lifted north, the wind direction came more around to a southerly uh, component, whereas in places like Erie, you still had more of a easterly component to the wind off relatively chilly Lake Erie, um, and so temperatures really struggled. Locally, we got to 55 at the airport today. We also got grazed, and I mean really just barely grazed, by a sprinkle and shower up towards I-90 earlier on this afternoon, up in Ashtabula, towards Erie, over towards Buffalo as well. Even some frozen precipitation for a time up into parts of uh, interior parts of uh, Ontario earlier on today. The uh, temperature changes are a coming though. Now, it's as cool right now this evening as of this recording as it'll be for the next several hours. Temperatures will actually rise through the 50s overnight tonight. You may even see 60 or so for early morning risers tomorrow. But cold front is out here. And what you see in Minneapolis and Dubuque, that's what's coming our way tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening so it's going to be one of those classic backwards kinds of days the, the cold front's not going to have a lot of moisture to ring out but a couple of showers will be a possibility after midnight tonight especially as we head towards daybreak tomorrow morning a couple of showers for those early morning risers mild but maybe a little damp looks like any raindrops are probably gone by about sunrise or so 7 a.m or so tomorrow morning check out the uh, temperature animation though we're going to roll this forward slowly and again if you're up and at them before daybreak it's going to feel balmy but the front approach is right around here, right just after daybreak. So notice at you know, 718, roughly we have a 10 degree or so temperature gradient from northwest to southeast across our area. And that gradient will continue to be a factor for a little while before everyone just turns chilly by the afternoon. We're going to spend a lot of the afternoon in the upper 40s and lower 50s, a little bit of a gusty breeze. It's going to feel kind of raw out there, even though the sun will try to come out. In fact, I think the sun will come out in most spots as we go into the afternoon from west to east. The sky clears. That'll allow the temperature to recover by a couple of degrees after bottoming out in the middle and upper 40s. Clouds will then roll back in tomorrow night. Now, this wave of low pressure to our south continues to be advertised by the modeling to keep the rain well to our south, but we'll see some clouds from that later on tomorrow night, first thing Friday morning, followed by clearing again Friday afternoon. As we go into the weekend, um, weak system in the northern branch of the jet stream kind of dips in from the north. Uh, we analyzed a minor cold front on the map with this, and this could be enough to spark some cloudiness at times on Saturday. It's probably not a bright and sunny day from start to finish on Saturday. It'll be a cool day, a little bit of a breeze as well. YSU, last home game of the year on Saturday. It's a big one at noon at the Ice Castle, and uh, hoping for a big crowd. We're hoping uh, for you know decent weather. It's not going to rain or anything, but there may be some clouds around that keep a lid on our uh, temperatures Saturday afternoon. This is not a particularly active pattern, of course. If you've been watching this video of late, you know we're in the middle of a pretty tranquil stretch across eastern Ohio and western PA. Elevated chance for showers late tonight, first thing Thursday morning. After that, probably not a drop of rain until at least the uh, middle of next week and maybe even beyond that. Um, so pretty quiet stuff for this time of the year. November tends to be quite a bit more active than September and October, but this year, so far, it's been a pretty quiet month in terms of precipitation. Departures from average as we roll through time. This map is going to change a lot. In fact, I forgot to change the uh, appropriate data time on this graphic, so you're not going to see this animate the way it should. But what we would see if I did this right was all this blue staying out here with red dominating and actually intensifying by next week as the warm anomalies by the end of next week into next weekend 
will be pretty impressive. We'll be probably a good 10 degrees or so above the average at times as we go into that final weekend before Thanksgiving. All right, tomorrow evening on 21 News at 6 and 11, along with the online version of the winter forecast, uh, you're going to find it all over the place tomorrow evening, whether you're more inclined to watch the shorter version or if you like Weather for Weather Geeks uh, usually and you like a more detailed forecast, that's going to be the one for you. We're going to put a blog up as well. What's a typical winter look like in terms of snowfall across our area? Well, of course, in northeast Ohio and northwest PA, lake effect is such a big component to these long-term averages. Our viewing area, there's a big difference from our northern to southern viewing area, of course. Usually northern Trumbull County, as far as a long-term average, northern Trumbull, northern Mercer, a lot of communities up there get 70 or 80 inches worth of snow per season. In a place like Selineville, East Palestine, East Liverpool, over towards Newcastle, it's usually under 40 inches. And then once you're up into the heart of the, of the snow belt, Chardon in Geauga County, over towards Ashtabula, Andover, um, over towards Meadville and Crawford County, up into Erie, PA. It's not uncommon to see uh, numbers well well into the triple digits for seasonal snowfall up there. Uh, this is why you know we, we always encourage everyone when, when you're using the Storm Tracker 21 app in our area, make sure you have the proper location selected because that's the forecast you're going to get fed in the app. And we tailor our forecasts, particularly in lake effect situations, to be appropriate for location. So we're not going to have a big lake effect forecast, of course, in, in East Liverpool. Um, whereas if you live up in Kinsman, uh, chances are you're going to have a lot more snow in a given winter than places off to the south. So it's important if you're a user of the Storm Tracker 21 app, and we hope you are, that uh, you have location settings you know, properly done um, so that you're always getting the uh, forecast that is appropriate for your location. Tomorrow evening, all about the winter forecast. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks tonight, and have a great rest of your Wednesday night.